bots. Hacker traps on the blockchain. Here? Take it away. So, these work? Yeah? Oh boy, I have a timer. I didn't expect that. Uh, so, hi everyone. I'm Noah from Hacken, and today I'm going to be telling you about a really obscure exploit uh, type called honeypots, which are pretty much hacker traps on the blockchain. So, to skip about 25 slides, let's go to exploiting smart contracts. Um, you want to exploit the smart contract, and here is you. Uh, and uh, you find a target, and you think you got an exploit. And there's two things that could happen. One, front-running bots. Somebody sees it on the mempool because you didn't use Flash bots protect or something, and uh, you miss your chance, buddy. Option two, you are a bad hacker. You did not correctly identify your target, and you were trapped by something called a honeypot. So, what are honeypots? Uh, well, smart contract honeypots are a special class of uh, smart contracts that look vulnerable but aren't. The big idea is to make you, as a hacker or a security professional, think that you can earn some money by sending funds to that contract, when in reality there is some quirk in the engine, an ether scan, or in the code that means that only the owner slash the deployer can uh, actually withdraw these funds. Uh, so, some quick uh, technical examples. Here's the multiplicator honeypot. That's like the school level example. And uh, in this case, we have uh, a simple function that takes, uh, that's payable and it takes, checks if your message value is bigger than the balance on the contract. And if it is, uh, it sends you all the funds on the contract. Now, uh, anyone here know what's wrong? I mean, it's written, but come on. Uh, so this dot balance already includes your value. Uh, so this if check is really just going to be deleted by the compiler and nothing happens. This is an empty receive block, uh, and it's beautiful. Uh, and this doesn't really work in practice, right? It's too simple. But here's one that actually does. Um, so this is this uh, gift box. Uh, this, sorry, this is a King of the Hill game, uh, and in it. You have a stake function. It checks if you sent more than the largest stake. And if you did, uh, then you become the new owner, the new king of the hill. And then using the withdraw function on the right, you can withdraw your funds, right? Uh, and this is all fair. Except those uh, eagle-eyed among you may have noticed there's two owner variables, one on the left, one on the right. Uh, the one on the left is set in the constructor on the left and defines the modifier on the left. And that one is never changed again. Uh, well, one on the right does absolutely nothing and is the one that's modified. So the original owner of the contract is going to stay the owner till the end of time. Uh, and they can call the withdraw function and take all your funds. Sounds silly, does it? Well, would you like some money? Because uh, these people did. And look what happened to them. Uh, it actually works, uh, and it's somewhat profitable. Again, this is obscure. This is not 200 million Euler hack. This is like 1 million over the last five years uh, micro hack. Um, but this guy earned a few thousand euros, and nobody can tell him uh, whether it was legal for him to do so or not. Actually, it's sort of illegal based on the most recent legal advice I got, just in case you want to run your own. But yeah. Um, the next example, uh, just keep it quick, a gift box. So everybody here knows how to, uh, how to do passwords properly, right? You want to use chat, uh, you want to use chat tree and not just set a password because everything's public on the blockchain. Uh, and the get gift function, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, the tricky thing is the set pass function, which is also in general good ish. Uh, it checks if the password has been set and allows you to put some money on the contract to set the password, so pretty much set the get box. Uh, but you come across this and you look on Etherscan and uh, there's already some money on the contract, right? And it looks like uh, somebody set the money because he wants more of a reward but forgot to set the password and then call the set pass function. And by default, that's going to be a hash of zero and I think that's something that you can get to. Uh, or you just, you know, call the set pass function. Uh, 
and uh, sorry, because uh, sorry, you cannot get to that hash. But uh, you just call the set pass function with one eater, and you get all the money out, right? Uh, but the thing is, there's a problem with eater scan for the last infinity years, and that is that it's not very transparent about contract to contract transactions. Uh, and this is actually a good place for me to mention this because now you can all go to Etherscan and tell them please fix this. Um, you see somebody called this set hidden function from a contract and if you look at Etherscan, nothing here. Uh, if you go to internal transactions and turn on advanced mode and read into every single transaction, eventually we figure out that the state changed here, which is uh, a bit of work, right? So yeah, that, that's a fun one. Um, so yeah, uh, these are the honeypot examples. Uh, why do they work? Uh, one, uh, hacking is a nasty business. You got about one minute to find your hack uh, before somebody else does, right? When the contract is deployed. Uh, two, there, uh, there is a ton of hackers that don't really know what they're doing. They're just running uh, a tool, like TO is a big example, if you know it. Uh, but in that case, somebody may be exploiting that tool. And three, just eaters can sucks. Um, how do we detect them? Um, so symbolic solvers, uh, heuristics, as was mentioned yesterday, you need to be an expert, you need to know what you're doing and what you're searching for, and then you can like, create a solver that's gonna check for specific scenarios. Option two, uh, transaction patterns. So that's something the um, incident detection crew is gonna be really good at and uh, be able to maybe find them that way. Uh, that only works for ones that have been exploited though, because uh, I don't know, ML training on bytecode is sort of tough. Um, so, standard process, get all the contracts, uh, get all the data, uh, generate your training data using the symbolic tool, and classify using ML, right? Uh, and what can we get out of that? Uh, well, there's, in that period that was uh, tested, about two million uh, smart contracts. Uh, there's a lot more now. Uh, and of that, only 150K were unique. I checked about uh, two weeks ago, and right now there's only about 600,000 unique smart contracts. So it's, uh, it's still not that much, honestly. Uh, of these, 50K cash flow, and about 300 honeypots, not very common. Um, which is two and a half thousand deployed ones when you account for the duplicates. Um, what are the types? So balance, that's the silly one. Somebody fell for that, I know. Uh, then we have a few like code issues, uh, and then we have a few eater scan issues. And as you can see, the eater scan issues are the big money maker. Uh, so uh, there are some additional cool ones uh, that have been discovered recently. Role encoding. Uh, okay, you know the Greek question mark. You know, uh, replace the semicolon in someone's code with a Greek question mark and just watch them off themselves. Yeah, you can do that in Solidity as well. So you take Open Zeppelin's access control library and uh, you pick like a random language like German and you find the um, a normal, you know, O with umlaut and you find another similar looking Unicode character and you just mix those around as permissions in code and somebody's gonna fall for that. So yeah, nice one. Another one is just, you know, do not put the parentheses on the call and watch what happens. It gets removed by the compiler and uh, you can make the code look a lot different uh, for somebody reading it, right? Uh, insights, uh, again, sorry, this is really fast. Uh, they work usually only once, you would expect. After somebody falls for it, you get uh, at least some info from Etherscan about uh, it being maybe dangerous. Um, they follow price peaks, only when they're the most profitable. Uh, so I really wonder how many there are right now. Uh, probably a few more of these patterns. And uh, they're not very big, uh, only 250 ETH, so one million in that time period, maybe like five, six million till now, not too bad. And uh, right now, uh, yeah, you can detect them pretty well for the known types using uh, the symbolic solving approaches. Uh, if you're interested in finding out more, uh, continued research on the Honeypots projects is uh, within the Smartbox project, uh, which you can find the GitHub repo for here. Uh, it's a pretty useful general like uh, tool aggregator. So uh, yeah, check it out, and uh, I hope this was a fun topic for you guys, because 
That's all it is.